one of our questions we asked ourselves at the outset is what do scientists do when they go out into the landscape, into the environment? What are they doing when they make these strange rectilinear picks and scrape and bang at the earth? When they invited us out there, they said, come out and have a look and see how you might um, approach this. But we actually said, no, we'll start recording straight away. And so we started observing the scientists and the traditional owners interacting with the land. Finding locations. We wanted to kind of do something that parallels, uh, I guess, how science looks at the environment. We ended up presenting this project as two screens, and the screens act as a kind of a dialogue. They give us a whole lot of possibilities for creating co-relationships or disjunctions. It's the first time in my 25, nearly 30 years of, of working on country in biogeography which I've engaged with artists directly in the field. The film itself was really eye-opening for me. It manages the macro to the micro. It gives you the sense of feeling that you get when you're on country and just some of the, the very human things that happen when you're in the field. Got one. The non-human is very important in this work as well. So it's not all about humans being the top of the hierarchy. And at one point, we have a wading bird on one screen who's peering into the water and in doing its own investigation, and a scientist peering into a microscope on the other side of the screen. How are we all together experiencing what's before us? How are we sensing the environment is probably the most critical thing for us as artists. My main dimension, if you like, is time. I'm really interested in, in long-term uh, change because the modern world is the product of past events and processes. I was working with the Larrakia, the traditional owners of the area around Darwin where this site is. And I was working alongside the Centre of Excellence of Australian Biodiversity and Heritage, trying to understand how the country has changed through over hundreds to tens of thousands of years. If you imagine a, a lake or a lagoon sitting in an environment, it's like a window into time, really. It's, it's picking up information constantly that's blowing around. For plants, they're producing pollen. At the same time, fires are occurring. And that all settles down and is trapped in these sediments for millions of years in some cases. We take a sediment core, take that back to our lab, we'll slice it and split it and start analysing sequentially from the past through the present. One thousand years. By doing that, slice after slice, we can see how landscape changes. One of the most significant impacts on country in Australia that's occurred over the last 20,000 years, since the last ice age, was the removal of Aboriginal management. And following the British invasion, following the removal of Aboriginal people from country, you start to see that millennia long management was keeping landscapes in a particular configuration. And that just changes. In some places you see catastrophic fires, other places you see expansion of rainforest. We can't keep on denying our place in the world. Western science is very much built on this paradigm that we are abstracted from the world around us. We need to be in there and immersed and understand those sorts of things. And I think the arts is a great conduit for that. We're dealing with different knowledges, both an indigenous one and a science knowledge, but also an artist's knowledge too. And so I think the work tries to entangle or dis disentangle, depending on how you view the work, these different knowledges and how they interact with each other. The viewer as well is another observer and brings 
their understandings. So it's a, it's a contemplation.